This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from Aotearoa's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. We only source from wind, hydro and solar and we are the leading supplier of electricity to EVs in Aotearoa. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another episode of the Ecotech Roundup show from the news of clean cars and green energy. Thanks for joining me. Several companies published their quarterlies this week, so we're going to start today's show with a bit of a roundup from all of them. And since they are all US companies, we're using US dollars, not Kiwi dollars, but from all of them. First, Lucid, which published its Q1 figures on Monday. As confirmed earlier this year, it made 2,314 air sedans in Q1, delivering 1,406. Both figures are markedly lower than the figures for Q4, and while Lucid's Q1 revenue was dramatically higher than this time last year at 149.4 million US dollars, it recorded a total loss of 43 cents per share. It says it has enough liquidity to keep things running until at least Q2 next year. Fisker coincided its quarterly results on Tuesday with a new sneak peek of an off-road Fisker Ocean called the Ocean Force E. During its quarterly earnings, Fisker recorded production of 55 cars and delivered two and dramatically cut its yearly production guidance by between 16 and 25 percent. It confirmed it was delaying production of its pair EV and recorded a total net loss from the quarter equivalent to 38 cents per share, with $47 million cash in the bank. Next, Rivian. On Wednesday, unlike other companies reporting this week, it had a reasonable quarter, with total production numbers of 9,395 vehicles and delivery figures of just shy of 8,000, exactly where it needs to be to meet its year-end goals. With revenues of 661 million, beating Wall Street expectations, shrinking losses of 1.35 billion, down noticeably on Q4, and sizable cash on hand, Rivian is edging towards profitability. Ability. Finishing off the quarterly reports is Nikola, which published its Q1 earnings also on Wednesday. It produced 63 Nikola Trey BEVs during the quarter but only delivered 31, adding to more than 113 Nikola Trays made but not delivered last quarter. With widening losses and too many trucks in inventory, Nikola is halting Trey BEV production and pivoting its attention to building hydrogen fuel cell trucks instead. With quarterlies out of the way, we head to Detroit, where Ford has officially reopened the order books for the very popular Ford F-150 Lightning pickup. Ford now says that no pre-reservation is needed to place an order, which means it might be easier for those who missed out on the initial hand-raising to get behind the wheel. That said, while Ford has lowered the price of the F-150 Lightning XLT extended range by $2,100 to make it eligible for the US federal tax credits for electric pickups. It is worth noting here that until Ford made that price adjustment, the XLT extended range was more expensive than the Lariat extended range was last year. Honda surprised us all on Friday morning by revealing a new all-electric model that will go on sale in Europe later this year, the Honda E colon NY1. While we're not super taken by the name, it doesn't exactly roll off the tongue, the car itself looks like it will fit quite well into the increasingly crowded European B-Class electric crossover segment. Unlike many EVs out there, it features a rear wiper, thank you Honda, and an interior cabin design that reminds us quite a bit of the Mustang Mark E. Complete with 15-inch touchscreen display, less exciting though is the 68.8 kilowatt hour battery pack and a WLTP range of 412 kilometers, that's 256 miles, as well as a claimed 45 minute 10 to 80% DC fast charge time, which would actually place it behind much of its competition. It's official. Panasonic has confirmed that it will be delaying its planned volume production of Tesla's 4680 form factor battery cells in order to make some tweaks to it. Unveiled three years ago, these new cells are essential to Tesla's stated plans to bring down production costs, and Tesla is already making them of its own accord at its production facilities for use in its vehicles. Given the sheer volume of cells it needs, however, Tesla also needs outside battery partners to chip in, and Panasonic has always been expected to be one of the companies to supply those cells to Tesla. But with Panasonic now pushing its planned volume production lines for Tesla's 4684 
form factor cells back to spring next year at the earliest in order to, quote, introduce performance improvement measures that will further enhance competitiveness, end quote, it could add extra stress for Tesla. Panasonic isn't the only company pushing back production plans this week, with news that planned production of the Volvo EX90 and Polestar 3 will be pushed back. Posting a global media statement this week, Volvo said that the EX90's planned start of production will be pushed back in order to allow it extra time to execute software development and testing. Since the Volvo EX90 and Polestar 3 share the very same underlying platform and will be built side by side on the same production lines in the US and China, it's no surprise that both vehicles are going to get the same delay. While neither Volvo nor Polestar have expanded on the reasons for the delay, other than to to cite software development and testing, it is worth noting that the sibling vehicles will be the first to market with LiDAR-assisted semi-autonomous operation as standard. First to market is never easy. There's been a lot of large, expensive electric cars launching of late, so I'm excited to tell you about one that is far smaller, although probably as expensive, the Alpine A290 Beta. Unveiled this week as a concept car, with a showcase just down the road from where I used to live in Bristol, UK, the car is the Alpine-badged version of Renault's soon-to-launch retro-inspired Renault 5 electric hatch and, being an Alpine, this version has plenty of rally-inspired elements to it. It's pretty unlikely the production version will look this extreme, but the inside, apart from that angular dash and weird lighting, gives off the kind of vibes you might have got had you asked a Group B rally fan to design design a car of the future in 1985. It's great to see Renault and Alpine pushing the boat out on this one, and I hope the production road-going version is just a little more practical, but what say you? The Tesla Model S and Model X are currently Tesla's oldest nameplates, having been in production since 2012 and 2015 respectively. In that time, both models have received some significant updates to their powertrain and interiors, even if their exterior designs have changed very little. And these days, while Tesla makes both, they account for a tiny fraction of its overall vehicle output. But Friday morning, Tesla announced out of the blue that it was ending production of right-hand drive Model S and Model X with immediate effect, cancelling the orders of anyone who was waiting for one. Instead, those customers have been told to order a left-hand drive version, something that puts them at a severe disadvantage on the roads and is outright illegal in some markets, or order a Model Y or Model 3 instead. Cancelling existing orders? That's not OK. One of the coolest things I've been able to witness in more than a decade covering this industry is improvements in and lowering cost of deploying renewable energy. Wind, solar and other forms of renewable energy generation are, year by year, playing an ever-increasingly large part in powering national and international power grids. But this week, a just-published study authored by the Northeastern University research team shows that photovoltaic solar panels currently mounted on the roofs of buildings could satisfy between 5 and 35 percent of all of the electricity consumed by U.S. manufacturing, while a further 45 percent of all U.S. manufacturing operations could get 100% of their energy from rooftop solar during the summer months if they installed it. Throw in some batteries and it could save companies a big bucks long term. Before we get to the last two stories, I have a quick question. Are you in the market for a new electric car? If you are and you live in Aotearoa, you should totally check out our very own buyer's guide at ecotricity.co.nz. It's packed with all the information you need to pick a car that's right for you and includes plenty of details about incentives you can get, charging providers you can charge up with and of course how to get charging and clean energy at home. Follow the link below and start your journey today. We, like many others in the space, have long maintained that car dealerships need to be fully in on electric vehicles in order for them to gain significant market share. Now a study from the US backs that up. Now there's a new study to back that up. The survey, conducted by the Sierra Club into dealership attitudes on EVs, showed some disturbing trends. The first relates to interest in EVs, with a full 45% of US dealerships saying they have zero interest in selling EVs, a troubling statistic that shows automakers need to engage with their dealerships more effectively on the benefits of electric cars. The second takeaway is also frustrating, with 65% of dealerships reporting that they don't have any EVs in stock to sell to customers. Luckily, though, on this one, there's a silver lining. Of those with no cars to sell, 44% said they'd 
happily sell EVs if only there was enough inventory stock on hand for them to do so. Time for automakers to ramp up production. And finally, as Tesla edges ever closer to bringing its long-promised Cybertruck to production, there's been a lot of news circling around about it, from its monocoque rather than promised exoskeleton construction to its new official accessories, as recently shown off by Tesla. But this week, a strange news story hit the wires about a prototype Tesla Cybertruck apparently getting stuck in a muddy field somewhere close to Tesla's Gigafactory. It allegedly required a tow to safety from the form of a gas-guzzling F series pickup. While some people are laughing at the resulting video, which sadly we don't have permission to share, it is worth noting that the Cybertruck's big wake probably played a part and that it probably doesn't yet have any production-ready software on board that we'd hope would have helped it get out of trouble. And of course, getting stuck is often down to the driver and their skills, not the vehicle. And on that note, we're done for the day. Before I go, though, do make sure you've hit the notification bell so you don't miss out in the latest in EV news from this channel. And of course, if you haven't already switched yet, it is time to switch to Altero's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. It is super easy to make the switch and you'll be helping the nation wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep the land beautiful. I'll be back next week with the usual roundup show and there will be some more awesome content very soon this week. And Gavin, Kiwi EV Shoebridge has been busy creating it. He's just been testing out the lovely Fiat 500e and I have got to say I am super jealous. I've not driven one yet. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite! See you next time.